So we've looked at the new Pixel 7 Pro. I decided to go ahead and buy the regular Pixel there's so many good deals going on right now for the Pixel 7 plus the $100 gift card or store credit. Regular price on this is $599. But like I said, there's a lot of good trade-in deals and you get a $100 Google store credit or if you get it from other places, a $100 gift card. <laughs> This one comes in lemongrass, snow, or obsidian. I sort of like all three colors, but in this case, I went with obsidian or black. This is the 128 gigabyte version. They've also got a 256 gigabyte version. You only get 512 on the pro version. Okay, this actually looks really nice. You're not gonna get a wall adapter with this. You've got a quick start guide, safety and warranty information. USB-C to USB-C charging cable. You've also got an adapter if you're switching from an older phone. I didn't realize this, but in this one and I think the 7 Pro, doesn't look like you've got a SIM card ejection tool anymore. Maybe they're trying to save money, I don't know. Kinda like this matte version better than the Pro version, or it's like a super shiny aluminum. You can see where the buttons and the ports are there on the front. You've got a matte black finish there around the edges to match the camera visor and then a shinier power and volume buttons. Even though this is quite a bit cheaper than the pro version, to me this still looks pretty high quality. Microphone on the top and then charging port and speaker on the bottom. The back on here is pretty nice too. You are gonna get some fingerprints, but not too bad. Now in the video, you're probably gonna notice the screen on here doesn't really look that white. That's just my camera kind of struggles with that. In person, it's just as white as the box. Now this one has the fingerprint scanner built right into the screen. And I think a feature that everyone's gonna love this year, they brought face unlock back. Especially if you don't like the built-in fingerprint scanner, face unlock is just gonna be a lot more convenient. And then of course, it's gonna have gesture navigation as the default. You can still go into the settings and change it to three button navigation. As you can see, they're doing the feather background on this one. It's okay, I guess. I'll probably end up changing that here in a little bit. When you swipe up, you're gonna get access to all of your apps. Now it's got quite a few updates to do first before we can get into the software. So we might as well go ahead and do that. But as far as storage goes, it's only used about 14 15 gigabytes so far before it does all the updating. So not too bad. Looks like it also has a software update here. Now just for size comparison, here it is next to the 7 Pro that Google sent me to review on the channel. Looks like the back material and color is basically identical. The only real difference I can tell is you've got the matte finish on the regular, super shiny on the Pro. So really not a huge difference here between the two. You've got a matte finish around the edge on the regular with super shiny buttons and then matte buttons and then a super shiny edge on the 7 Pro. I also like it how they have the accent color going around the front facing camera when it's doing the face unlock. So just trying to do the fingerprint scanner there, already I can tell not much of an improvement over the 6 series, but like I said, you'll definitely like the face unlock, which I'll probably be using most of the time. Now if you're not familiar with Pixel devices, I actually really like the software on here for the most part. If you swipe left of the home screen, you're going to get the Google Discover or Newsfeed. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always finding interesting stuff to read or watch in there. Swipe down to get the notification shade. First thing I would do, turn on auto rotate. You have most of your your basic stuff in there like internet, Bluetooth, do not disturb, flashlight, auto rotate, battery saver, airplane mode, and device control. Then you also have nightlight, screen record, and nearby share. But really there's a ton more of shortcuts that you can add. Just hit this little pencil here and you have just a ton of options in here. One I would probably move up is dark theme. Another one I would suggest moving up is extra dim. To me, that one's just helpful if you're looking at your phone at night and you don't want to be blinded. Just turn the extra dim on. It makes a huge difference. The one thing I don't like about their software, I would like to be able to clear all, sort of like on Samsung or OnePlus, instead of having to swipe all the way over and then hit clear all. And then of course just swipe up anywhere on the screen to access all the pre-installed apps. You're not going to find a phone that has much less pre-installed than you will on a Pixel phone. And the good thing is, it's most of the apps that I would probably use anyways. 
You can watch YouTube videos up to 2160p or at 4K resolution, full HD playback resolution on apps like Netflix, and the picture quality looks really nice on here. Uh, you've also got smooth display on here where it's going to automatically raise the refresh rate from 60 up to 90 hertz for some stuff. Keep in mind that could increase battery usage, but I'm going to leave that on for now. Now, don't forget you also get wireless charging with this phone. Sure, it may not be the fastest way to charge, but it's actually pretty convenient if you're on a road trip and you just want to throw your phone down in the charging area. Interesting thing about the performance on here, if you're just comparing the Geekbench tests, it's almost going to be identical to the 7 Pro and single core score, just barely under the multi-core score. And this only has 8 gigabytes of RAM, where the Pro version has 12. And then same thing with gaming during my testing. I was kind of curious to see if this was going to overheat or have any glitches or anything considering this just came out. And so far I've had pretty good luck. PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9 play smooth on here. You're going to get HD graphics, high frame rates. Everything looks really nice on this screen. I feel like this phone has really good performance just as far as moving around the software, multitasking, that kind of stuff. And it has pretty decent gaming performance as well, especially when you consider the price. One downside to gaming with this phone, it doesn't exactly fit controllers like this because of the camera visor bump along the back. I mean it still works, just not ideal. You've got one bottom firing speaker and one up by the earpiece. Let's go ahead and do a quick test just to see how this compares to the Pixel 7 Pro. Okay, the speakers on here actually sound pretty good. Not a lot of bass. Not sure if these are quite as loud as on the 7 Pro. Still pretty good though, in my opinion. Now inside the camera app, you're gonna have Top Shot turn on by default, which is basically where it turns clips into like a short video. You're gonna have options like night sight, motion where you have long exposure or action pan. I don't know if I would really use these features that much, but they're just cool options to have. You're also gonna have portrait video, which is gonna shoot in 4K up to 60 frames per second. And then you'll notice you've got 10 bit HDR and speech enhancement. It's only gonna work in certain modes though. Then you've also got cinematic blur where it's basically like portrait mode, but for video and it's gonna blur the background. Personally, I would go into the advanced settings and turn off where it says store videos efficiently. If I don't do that, it's really hard to preview videos on my computer without dragging it into a video editing software or something like that. You also have RAW plus JPEG control. One thing I don't see on here that you get with the Pro version is going to be the auto macro mode. And then just for the regular camera settings, you've got three presets of 0.7, 1x, and 2x. You can zoom in to 8x, but the quality is not going to be as good. But surprisingly, this actually looks decent. I tried this test with the 7 Pro. Let's see how it does with this one, even though it doesn't have the macro mode. Okay, not quite as good as on the Pro version. Still pretty good. You can see all the shapes there once you zoom in. They also have shortcuts here you can get to the camera just by double tapping the power button. Let me give you a few samples of photos and video just to give you an idea of what to expect from the Pixel 7. You get a 50 megapixel wide angle main lens. Then you also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide, which you're going to get their super res zoom up to 30x. And then you've got a 10.8 megapixel front facing camera, not quite as wide as the ultra wide on the back, but still 92.8 degrees. So pretty decent. You're also going to get video recording up to 4k resolution, 60 frames per second. And that's going to be on the rear and front facing cameras. They've also added in a ton of other stuff to this phone, like cinematic blur, 
sensors. You've got slow motion video support up to 240 frames per second, optical image stabilization, fused video stabilization. Even in 4K, it's got the locked video stabilization and cinematic pan video stabilization. Even in the audio recording, it's got wind noise reduction, speech enhancement, stereo recording and audio zoom. During my battery drain test, this phone lasted over 13 hours before it finally died. That's even better than the Pixel 7 Pro, which is crazy good and right up there with some of the best battery life on any phone that I've tested. If you want a phone with great battery life, it's gonna be tough to beat this one. In my opinion, I feel like you could get this regular Pixel 7 and not really miss out on too much compared to the Pro version. It really seems like this could be one of the best values use out there this year if you want some flagship features at a cheaper price. So hopefully this video gave you a little closer look at the new Pixel 7. I may have to do some more comparisons against some other phones that I've got, which should be pretty interesting to see how this stacks up. So you'll definitely want to look out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishby Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.